Keep the paste close to the treatment area to replenish the operator's rubber cup or brush. And also help the patient by rinsing and evacuating excess polish during the procedure. After treatment is complete, it may be your responsibility to teach proper home care to the patient. A basic review for your benefit is presented at the end of this film. Finally, the patient is given both verbal and written postoperative instructions. Emphasize to them the importance of using any prescription medicines as directed, plus calling or returning to the office immediately if they feel something needs attention. After they're dismissed, the treatment area and the instruments are recycled. Again, mild periodontitis usually responds to non-surgical root planning and soft tissue curatage. However, the patient's home care ultimately determines their prognosis for healing. The importance of your role in teaching them may actually parallel what the doctor provided in treatment. Periodontal surgery may be needed in addition to root planning and curatage. It's scheduled when the tissues don't respond completely to non-surgical care. It may be performed locally or it may involve the entire mouth at one visit. Surgery adds these two additional elements excision of the diseased gum tissues, and possibly the reshaping of the supporting bone. Both enable the reestablishment of proper anatomy and help the patient adequately floss and brush all of the dental surfaces. In surgery, more instruments are used. Deeper anesthesia is usually needed, and post-surgical closure is necessary using sutures or periodontal packing. Your role as a dental assistant is expanded and may involve monitoring the anesthesia, placing the packing, removing sutures, and some other procedures, depending on the laws of your state. Surgery begins with the usual review of the medical history and proper patient preparation. Once they're seated and the needed instruments are gathered and left covered from view for a patient peace of mind, you may put on your mask, gloves, and protective eyewear. Many periodontal patients are sedated before surgery. They must have a companion with them to drive them home. After the local anesthetic has been administered and allowed to take effect, surgery may begin. The doctor first assesses the onset of the anesthesia using a sharp explorer. The actual sequence of periodontal surgery varies depending on individual doctor's trainings and experience. The goal is the same, though, in all cases remove diseased tissue, and restore proper morphology. First, periodontal markers are used to show the shape of the bottoms of the sulcus around each tooth. They are inserted to depth and squeezed, leaving a small perforation in the gingiva. Or, the periodontal probe may be inserted to depth, then removed and used to make the perforation in the gingiva, or marked as shown here. An indelible pen might then be used to connect the dots, and outline the periodontal defects that need correction. After isolating the area with cotton rolls or gauze, the dentist uses a scalpel or a periodontal knife to incise the gingiva adjacent to the teeth. Next, the gums are carefully reflected from the teeth and the underlying bone using a periosteal elevator. The doctor then exchanges the elevator for tissue forceps and tissue scissors or nippers. As the doctor trims the diseased tissue away, hold several layers of gauze near the treatment area to help wipe the instruments clean. Throughout the procedure, keep the surgical aspirator tip near the treatment area to maintain good visibility and to retrieve small pieces of diseased tissue. Occasionally, inadequate healthy gum tissue may remain. The doctor may elect to perform a graft by shifting an adjacent layer of gingiva over the site or by relocating a thin sheet from the roof of the mouth or some other healthy area. Once the diseased soft tissue is removed and the gums properly recontoured, the surgeon directs his attention toward the surfaces of the teeth. Using scalers or an ultrasonic wand, he smooths them of any deposits. Remember, efficient instrument transfer can help minimize treatment time and help maximize patient healing.
finally, any bone defects such as craters or sharp edges are reshaped. Sometimes, but in the absence of any infection, a bone fill may also be needed. Both artificial bone fills and patients' self-donated bone may be used. After the surgical areas are rinsed clean with sterile saline and hemorrhage is under control, the gingiva are closed with sutures and possibly also using periodontal packing. The periodontal packing you mix may be prepared ahead of time, or it might be a type that's mixed just before it's needed. You may wish to wear vinyl overgloves or place new latex gloves during the mixing. Follow the mixing instructions carefully, which vary widely depending on the product. The goal is to get a putty similar to the consistency of soft clay. Some states allow the dental assistant to place the periodontal dressing. When placing the packing, first blot the sutured area dry with the sterile gauze. Then, place a small roll of the periodontal dressing along the outer necks of the teeth. Using a plastic filling instrument, compress the material in between the teeth. And then repeat the procedure on the inside, forcing the packing through the interproximal spaces and connecting it with the front roll. Once placement is complete, use a scaler to carefully trim the excess packing away. Remove the excess that falls with cotton pliers or a gauze. A final rinse of warm water completes the procedure. Sometimes a thin foil or a plastic cover may be placed over the packing to help keep it dry until it's fully set. Advise the patient of this and let him know that if it becomes dislodged that he can remove it without worry. Written and verbal postoperative instructions must be given. In general, advise a patient to drink cool drinks, to eat non-spicy foods, to refrain from the suctions that are caused from smoking and using a straw or spitting, and to try and keep their mouth clean by rinsing and through very gentle brushing. Tell them that any minor bleeding and loss of pieces of the packing are normal. Most importantly, encourage the patient to call the office with any questions or concerns and to use the prescription medicines given them. Also, make sure the patient's face is clean before dismissing them from the treatment area. And finally, document the treatment in their record, clean up the treatment area, and properly recycle the surgical instruments and discard any disposables. Periodontal surgery patients expect and usually tolerate a moderate amount of discomfort. Share these postoperative instructions with each patient following any procedure to help alleviate potential fears when normal but potentially alarming post-op symptoms develop. First, make sure they know that some minor bleeding, swelling, or soreness is inevitable. All of these are normal signs of healthy healing and progress. If a periodontal packing was placed, it will protect the area and will continuously apply a medicament to the gingiva. Small pieces may dislodge, which is perfectly normal. Also tell the patient to take all medications as prescribed and to limit exertion for a day or two if surgery was provided. For 24 hours after the surgery, have them intermittently place cold compresses to limit swelling. After 24 hours, they may use heat packs to reduce excessive swelling. Encourage them to drink lots of fluids and to avoid hot or spicy foods. Instruct them to gently clean the teeth not covered with packing using a very soft toothbrush. After 24 hours, a warm salt rinse or mouthwash may be used to clean the rest of the mouth. And finally, emphasize that the practice is receptive to their calls of concern Make sure they know the doctor's name and telephone number and encourage them to return if they ever feel that the bleeding of the swelling is excessive. In order for periodontal treatments to work, proper patient home care and regular follow-up maintenance visits are critical. As we've said, periodontal disease is much like diabetes in that you're never really free from the danger of recurrence. 
Your role as a dental assistant may involve teaching patients how to brush and floss their teeth. If bone and gingival recontouring was done, special cleaning aids might also be needed. You must be familiar with them and be able to show how they're used. It's the only way a patient will gain any benefit from them. Remind the patient of the importance of totally removing all plaque from the mouth at least once a day using both dental floss and a toothbrush. Demonstrate properly holding the floss and using it along the necks of the teeth. And remember, impaired patients might benefit from some type of floss holder. Depending on your office's oral hygiene philosophy, demonstrate the proper toothbrush technique. It may be the modified bass technique, shown here, in which the bristles are aimed into the sulcus at the gum line, gently moved side to side several times, and then stroked along the teeth toward the occlusal surface. Finally, deliver any prescriptions for fluorides, rinses, antibiotics, or any other medicines. Emphasize their use, citing that it's easier to prevent a potential runaway problem than to stop one that's already started. Just as diabetics must use insulin, oral medications, or a modified diet and exercise to control their disease for the rest of their lives, periodontal patients require regular professional maintenance therapies. Remind the patient that surgical retreatments are almost always due to missed follow-up treatments and compromised home care. The doctor establishes the interval for maintenance dental cleanings depending on the patient and the severity of the disease. Initially it can be from one to three month intervals. Maintenance appointments resemble a hygienist's prophylaxis procedure, but with the greater demands of exposed root surfaces, sensitivity, possible bleeding, and unexpected soft tissue curatage and root planning that also may be required. Many of the dental instruments used in periodontal procedures are used in the other dental areas. A basic setup is used in all periodontal procedures and contains the mouth mirror, the explorer, and the periodontal probe. Other specialized explorers, such as a cow horn, allow access to areas of dental defects not reachable with a standard dental explorer. Anesthetic materials must also be available for periodontal care even in the absence of anticipated use. The topical anesthetic gel, the needle and the syringe, and the anesthetic cartridges should be loaded and ready for the use should the doctor require them. Non-surgical periodontal care primarily involves using hand and ultrasonic instruments in planing the roots of the teeth so that they're smooth and in curating diseased gingival tissue from within periodontal pockets.